Sally Ulianich here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new Twitter header for the 2014 new design in Photoshop. And I'm using CS4, although it should be similar for most recent versions. So I'm just going to go up to File and New, and I'm just going to type Twitter header. And uh, I know the dimensions are 500 by 1500. So that's what I'm going to set it as. So width we want it at 1500 and height we want it at 500. If yours isn't set up for pixels, all you have to do is just click here and select pixels. Or if you're a, um, a brainiac and you can convert uh, inches, you know, pixels, to inches, whatever. And, but it's pixels, okay. So I'm going to click on OK. So here's my canvas, and I'm I'm really not positive what I want to do with my new header. So we're just going to kind of do something. So first thing, I'm going to add a new layer, because that's what I do. Um, I'm going to use a paint bucket, and I'm going to fill with white. Uh, we're set at the default. If you're not set at the default, hit X. Um, and if you want to switch, or sorry, D for default, X to switch. So I'm going to fill this layer. And let's throw a pattern over it. So we're going to go down here. Um, and I have it set up as my favorite. It's not quite my favorite, so um, that's kind of a misnomer. But it's getting closer. Um, but this is just how I prefer to have it laid out here. So um, I'm in the Layers panel here. And I'm going to click on the FX to add uh, effects to it. So we're going to click on pattern overlay and no thank you. So I'm going to click on this drop down and I by default I, I'm pretty sure I have I think I have all the patterns out. If you don't you can just click on this little arrow here and you can select different patterns and um, you can replace them so that'll wipe out, if you hit OK, it'll wipe out everything you have here and replace it with only the one that you selected. Or if you hit Append, it'll add it to what you have there. So I'm just going to cancel. Uh, let's see. I want to do maybe a nice kind of linen paper. What do we have here? That's Metallic Flex Marbled. Not very exciting. I know linen's not very exciting, but it's something sketch paper. That's got some texture there. So now maybe I want to do a gradient overlay. Not that one. Um, first thing I'm going to do, because I know that I'm going to want to have a gradient that, that shows the texture of the pattern I just laid down, um, I'm going to click on the blend mode and I want to change it to either darken or multiply uh, it kind of depends on what gradient I'm going to choose. I'm just going to choose Multiply. So you can see how the texture came through. And I'm just going to up arrow to choose Darken. See, it's it's very different. So I'm just going to stick with Multiply for right now. And let's take a look at gradients here. And again, I think I have all of them open up already. If you don't click on the arrow, you can select the different... Oh, I don't think I have... Do I have noise samples? Let's see. I don't. Those are pretty exciting. Okay. Well, we learn something new every day, right? So, um, that's kind of nice. It's a nice, subtle, um, you know, I try not to be too girly or too rainbowy. Rainbows are so happy, but, okay. I kind of like the transparent pastels. But maybe I don't like them in a line. So I can change it from linear to radial. That does a circle. That's kind of weird looking. So I'm just going to down arrow. There's angle. That's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, reflected. The yeah, diamond. If that was a pattern, that would look cool. But no, I'm, I'm kind of digging this angle. I'm going to slide this over so we can take a look at the whole thing. That's pretty cool. Um, let's see what another blending mode looks like. So we'll start darken, multiply. Uh, let's see. 
some of them don't really do anything depending on the color range or you can see it's really really subtle right there some of them are almost gone hard light that that could look really cool with the right effects on there um, that's crazy looking and it's good to keep in mind you know it's good to go through all of them just to get a feel for what to expect with all of them so I'm just going to go up the way up to normal. Normal just or dissolve has the speckly look, darken. I like multiply. Drop shadow doesn't do anything. Um, Alright, I'm just going to leave it at that. And I'm a big fan of lines and just kind of compartmentalizing things, designs. So, um, but I don't think I'm going to choose the line tool because sometimes it's not very thick I, I like something I can easily adjust so I'm gonna go up to the rectangle tool and I am gonna hit X to switch out these colors here and I know um, my profile photo is gonna go right around here somewhere so I, I want to leave that clear but I'm gonna do a nice little do kind of a box here and click see um, it creates a mask I'm going to open this up a little bit. Um, and when mask is selected, it throws that line around there so you don't quite get a good look at what's on there. And that's kind of harsh. So maybe I want to do a kind of a dark gray instead. Not that. There we go. And then I'm going to narrow it up a little bit. So with the height, let's drop it down to 90. And then I want to add a drop shadow to give it some depth. So we're going to pop the size up. If I hold shift and the up button, it'll pop it up by 10. And that's, that might not, let's see what 5 looks like. So, okay, that's good. Distance, eh, distance is okay. Spread, we're going to bump it up to 30. And then the size, we can expand a little bit more. All right, and I want to add some text in here. Oh yeah, by the way, I probably should have saved this. So I'm going to go up to File, because even though I entered a name for the file, I didn't actually save it. So we're going to do a quick save as. My computer's a little slow, if you hadn't noticed. We're just going to save it to the desktop, and we already gave it a awesome name there so we're just gonna click OK that's fine whatever alrighty so I'm gonna throw my what do I put there should I put my name or should I put my my web address I'll just do my name it's teeny tiny you can hardly see it on there and you may notice we're at 50% here, so it's going to be a lot bigger. So just keep that in mind for any text you put on there. Um, okay, and I totally misspelled my name because I can't even see it. So um, let's see. How about we're going to pick a text color here. And maybe, maybe a blue. All right. And we're going to make it... Make it big so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. We want it right aligned, so I'm going to go on paragraph and then the right align. And I want it right about there. And I don't want, I mean, that's the cool text font and all, but um, I try not to use really crazy fonts because I just want something people can read and um, and if you're spending more than I don't know five or ten minutes trying to figure out what font to use you're usually you're working too hard and you should just go with whatever just something pretty pretty standard that one's fine right so we'll go up to 72 Pop that up there. So we want bold. Sure. All 
All right. Well, that's not crazy fancy or anything, but that is it's a a decent start for a Twitter header. So I'm just going to save it for web. Uh, that's Control Alt Shift and S or File Save for Web and Devices. Either way, whatever works for you. Yeah, that's not very exciting, but you know, I'll. Uh, I'm more excited just to kind of figure out what this is going to look like. So we're going to save that and call it a day. So that is creating a Twitter header for the new dimensions. Again, 500 high by 1500 wide. And uh, next we're going to be uploading it to our new Twitter design. So pretty exciting. So I hope this was helpful, taught you a few things maybe. And I hope you get the new Twitter design soon. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Check out my blog at sallyu.com. And have a great day. Thanks for tuning in.